Oklahoma has been producing big-time quarterbacks for a long time now. You've had guys such as Landry Jones, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurt, Spencer Rattler, Caleb Williams, and most recently Dylan Gabriel. For some reason, the Oklahoma Sooners have been tremendous at developing and getting quarterback talent, and a guy they had on the roster a couple of years ago was seen as the next great Sooners quarterback. He was probably going to be the guy after Caleb Williams, and with a few years of development, probably could have gone off to the NFL. Unfortunately, now as we flash forward a couple of years, he's flamed out of two Power 5 programs and is playing at the lower Group of 5 level. He'll get a chance to save his career this upcoming season, but what happened to Nick Evers is really sad. At one point, he was seen as one of the fastest rising quarterbacks in the country as he was part of the class of 2022 and had offers from nearly every school in the country. Unfortunately, he would not work out at Oklahoma or Wisconsin, and now he's at UConn trying to save it all. In today's video, we're going to talk about Nick Evers. We're going to talk about how he became a big-time recruit to begin with, talk about his time at both Oklahoma and Wisconsin, and what is next for him. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you didn't support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to Nick Evers. In order to understand how Evers got to this point, we first need to go back in time. His parents would meet at Texas A&M, where they were basketball walk-ons for the men's and women's team. Apparently, their first date featured a game of one-on-one, -on -one, and she would say, quote, It's a good thing he didn't let me win. Eventually, they ended up having Nick, and as he got more and more involved in sports, they developed a long-term relationship with quarterback coach Kevin Murray, the former Texas A&M star and father of Kyler Murray. When Nick got to 8th grade, he was seen as a guy with some potential. Murray said that Nick was not a phenom by any stretch, but his arm whip and natural spin looked very promising. His father said, quote, When someone of Kevin's caliber says, I believe in you, it meant so much to Nick and our family. Eventually, he got better and better, and there were two obstacles that could have broken down Nick Evers, and the first occurred when he was 11. He was trying to earn playing time as a wide receiver, and apparently he belted making a catch on a slant route and got up too slowly for the coach's liking, and the coach said, quote, You've got no heart. The criticism actually bruised the kid more than the tackle did, and his mom, hearing the exchange, remembers, quote, wanting to snatch that coach in too. But instead, she told Nick to change his body language because the coach was misreading his cues. The next setback would come during October of his freshman year, when Nick ignored an aching throwing arm and then eventually suffered a mid-game stress fracture while making a pass. The break was so violent, the referee heard the snap of his bone, and Nick recalled looking down and saying, oh my goodness, my arm was just hanging there. He immediately wondered if he'd ever be able to throw the ball again, and plus he was getting a ton of criticism from people saying he wasn't meant to play quarterback, and it could have been easy for Nick to quit. Eventually, he blew up at Flower Mount High School as he threw for 2,300 yards with 19 touchdowns and also ran for 648 yards and 14 scores on the ground. While his passing accuracy did take a dip as a senior, he flashed more of a dual threat ability that could probably get him to a higher level. Initially in his recruitment, Florida was going after Cade Klubnik and Connor Weigman. But those both ended up choosing Clemson and Texas A&M, and the fallback option was Nick Evers. He eventually would commit to Florida in March of that year, but only after evaluating schools using a spreadsheet with 20 different success line items with weighted scoring. This was his parents' suggestion, and his dad said, quote, It gives you something quantitative to look at along with what your gut tells you. As I said, he decided to commit to Florida and became the next great quarterback for head coach Dan Mullen, and he was pumped to be building something special in Gainesville. His stock soared even higher in July of that year when he would place third in the Elite 11 camp in Los Angeles. He said, quote, There are times where I look at all the hard work I put in and not see the outcome. It was like, what am I doing wrong here? Why am I not getting the same accolades as some of these other top quarterbacks in the nation, but my parents were right by my side, telling me to never give up, and that is just not what an Evers does. We keep on fighting. At the time of his commitment, he was a three-star recruit and the number 447 player in the country, but his summertime performances in the Elite 11 would eventually raise his profile to four-star level. After his commitment to Florida, he said that he was super excited to help build things in the swamp, and he was going to try to help recruit a class and do something special in 2022. But then things would change. As he was at Sunday school one day in Flower Mound, Texas, he would get a notification on his phone. He immediately felt the gravity of the situation, and would text the news to his parents that Dan Mullen was fired. Eventually, he would decide to decommit to Florida because of this, and it was an interesting time because Mullen was fired just a month before December signing day, and he had to figure everything out. His mother said, quote, Nick had to process the loss because he talked to Dan all the time. We love Dan and we consider him a friend, so we felt for him. But we reminded Nick throughout recruiting that the person who recruits you is probably not going to be the one who sees you graduate. 
As the family drove home after church, he recalls getting a ton of messages from fellow commitments and even one top 100 player who was on the verge of announcing. They were all wondering what was going on. The quarterback, who minutes before was in a flux, reigned in shock and tried to radiate calmness. He said, quote, We knew stuff like this could happen, and all the really good things about UF are still there. He ended up becoming the number four ranked player at his position, according to some sites, and all of a sudden, he was speed dating different schools. He considered Ole Miss, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Texas Tech, Texas, Iowa, Indiana, Virginia Tech, and Boise State, amongst others. He said, quote, It's been humbling. I'm really blessed to be considered as an option. Where would he end up going? Well, he would get a chance to go up to Oklahoma. They had recently lost the commitment of Malachi Nelson, who followed Lincoln Riley to USC, and after seeing a mass exodus, Oklahoma finally found a gem as they ended up getting Nick Evers to commit. He had at least 26 offers, but he chose the Sooners after a conversation with new offensive coordinator Jeff Levy. He ended up signing with Oklahoma over Florida, Auburn, Penn State, and Texas Tech. An interesting side note is that once Levy got the hiring paperwork out of the way, the first thing he did was drive to Flower Mound, Texas to recruit Nick Evers. Levy also recruited him while he was at Ole Miss, and after Evers had committed to Florida, he said, quote, Man, this guy is going to be a special player, and he's got a special skill set. In total, during his junior and senior year, Evers threw for 5,000 yards and 44 touchdowns, and also ran for 18 more. Scouts saw him as the next great quarterback who could both throw and run the ball, and it looked like he pretty much checked every box for being a good college player who had potential to play on Sundays. According to 24-7 Sports, Evers was a four-star recruit, number eight quarterback, and the 137th best player in the class of 2022. So, how would he end up doing in Norman? Well, let's take a look. When Evers would arrive at Oklahoma, he was actually in a decent position, as the Sooners did not have a great amount of depth at the position in 2022. They no longer had 5-star after 5-star backing each other up, and this would lead to an opportunity for Evers to hopefully get on the field a bit. They had just brought in UCF transfer Dylan Gabriel, who was 100% going to be the starter, and after that, they really just ended up having Evers. Everyone was excited about the true freshman in Norman, and Levy said, quote, He's been preparing his whole life and his whole career to compete for a job in college. As I said, at first it was just him and Gabriel, but eventually they would bring in junior college transfer General Booty, and they ended up getting Pitt transfer David Beville. However, he was by far the most talented and had the highest ceiling of any of those three guys, and if something would happen to Gabriel, his number was likely going to be called. He ended up playing his part, as he worked hard in practice, but apparently he just wasn't picking up the scheme, and eventually he just did not get on the field. In total, he had just one completion during his time at Oklahoma, and that was a incompletion in a 49-0 loss against Texas. He said, quote, It's frustrating, but I've played the patient game my whole life. I'm confident in God's plan that he's going to put me in a place that he wants me to be, and I'm just trusting his timing and trying to stay true to that. Unfortunately, Evers would decide to jump ship after the 2022 season and would enter the 2023 transfer portal. Dylan Gabriel was going to return, and they brought in Jackson Arnold, so I guess he saw the writing on the wall. He entered the portal on December 5th and eventually visited Wisconsin, and then after teasing pictures on social media, he announced his plans to transfer there, as Luke Fickle was now taking over as the head coach. When he got there, the quarterback room was kind of barren, but eventually Tanner Mordecai and Braden Locke transferred in, so he would have plenty of competition in Madison. His talent throwing the ball had been evident in spring practice, and apparently he had the strongest arm of the five in the group, and then combining that with his mobility made many people think that Evers had all the potential in the world. This past season, Tanner Mordecai ended up being the starter, but after he got hurt, they turned to Braden Locke instead of Evers, and Nick literally never saw the field. Instead of rolling with the third-year quarterback, Wisconsin once again decided to get another transfer, as they went and got Tyler Van Dyke away from Miami. While Locke wasn't anything special, he ended up solidifying himself at number two, so once Van Dyke and Locke were going at it for the starting job, Evers was the third man out, and once again, he decided he was going to transfer. They also had freshman Mabry Mature and Cola Crew, and things were going to be really difficult for him in Madison. Van Dyke said, quote, Nick's ceiling is through the roof, he's super talented, has a strong arm, and can throw all these off-platform throws. Sadly though, high praise from his teammate would not be enough to keep him there, as he decided to enter the transfer portal with three years of eligibility remaining, and decided to go somewhere where he could play. Honestly, it's not a terrible move, but where would he end up going? Well, yes, he was highly recruited, everyone knew that Nick Evers was going to have to transfer down a level if he wanted to play. He ended up eventually deciding to take a spot with UConn, as they had just lost Taquan Roberson to the portal, and they'll be happy to get a guy like Evers right away. He'll immediately step into the competition and probably get that starting nod, and if he doesn't, that's extremely concerning, but he'll reunite with former wideout Skylar Bell, who also transferred to UConn this winter. It seems like there was a mini pipeline of players going from Wisconsin to UConn, but Evers will now have to try to save his career at a school that has struggled immensely lately. 
Yes, they had their cool little bull run two years ago, but UConn has not exactly been known as a place for quarterback talent or winning big time games or playing in front of crazy crowds. While he was in Norman or Madison, he was expecting to play for a team with a ton of pageantry and a ton of fans in the stands, but he'll really have to earn it at UConn. I think he will get an opportunity to start, and I'm definitely rooting for him, and I hope he makes it work, but he's now going to be out of the spotlight. Unfortunately, according to what I've read and some insider knowledge I have, he was just not able to pick up the playbook or really able to pick up the offense, and when you're struggling with that, it doesn't matter how great your arm is or how fast your legs are. He just wasn't able to figure that out, and that's ultimately why he has to go down a level. He's always had all the physical traits, the potential, and the abilities, but I guess something is just off with the offensive system that he's been in. I'm not quite sure what UConn's system is, but you'll probably get a lot more chances as he's by far the most talented quarterback there, and there's not exactly anybody behind him who I think is that much better. Immediately, this is a big get for UConn, and I don't really know how much it really changes things, but it is unfortunate for Nick Evers. He went from a guy who was considered the future of Florida and Oklahoma football at one point to not being able to play there, not being able to play at Wisconsin, and now has to settle for a school that pretty much no one watches. Still though, he has a great story and has three years of eligibility to play, so maybe he balls out this year and transfers again to a bigger program. We'll just have to wait and see, but for now, he has been a little bit underwhelming, and this is what happened to Nick Evers. What do you guys think, though? If you're an Oklahoma or Wisconsin fan, why did Nick Evers not work out? And who's another quarterback or recruit I should take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.